Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And in this fairly quick video, I'm gonna go over the Imaging Edge desktop software. Now, the Imaging Edge desktop software is basically a suite of software that Sony provides for free. Now, it'll allow you to remote control your camera from the computer with the like remote tethering feature. Then it has a viewer application that'll allow you to view your photos in various ways to inspect them and stuff like that. And then you have a raw editor or you can also edit JPEG files to a limited degree. So you basically get the remote control function, you get a viewer, and then you get an editor. And I'm gonna go through each of those programs to show you how to use them, at least give you like a crash course into how to go about using that free software suite. Because a lot of people, you know, you get a camera and then you don't have anything to use to process the photos, export the raw files to JPEG, for example, so you can upload them to the internet easily. That's what Sony provides with this Imaging Edge desktop suite. Now I've been playing with it today for like an hour or two using my Sony a6400 and it was a lot of fun and it was actually really easy to use at the end of the day and offered a lot of nice features when it comes to doing macro photography or just things where you must have the focus perfect and you just want to play with it and see it on a large screen as opposed to the small screen that the camera has. So let's just jump right into it, guys. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to the Imaging Edge software download page, and I will have that link right below the video, but you can see up here, this is the actual link for it. So you just go here and click download, and that's really all there is to it. You're just gonna to have to select you know, your operating system. I'm using a Mac, so I'm gonna click download Mac. Now it's downloading here on the bottom left, and then I could just basically launch the program. It's gonna open it up, and mind you, I already have this installed on my laptop, so I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but basically you double click on the package here, and this it's just giving you all these warnings and stuff. You just basically have to hit continue, and go through the whole process, continue, 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 blah, blah, blah. And that will then install the app on your computer, like so. And now if I go back here, you got features and specs, supported devices here. So if you're not sure if your camera's gonna work, click on the supported devices and you can go through and find out if it'll work. But most of the cameras work these days. Some of the older ones do not. And then if you're struggling on how to use it, just click this how to use area. And it really is very, very intuitive. It's not that bad. Like it's not as hard to figure out as you might think. The, the walkthroughs are very, very straightforward. However, I'm gonna walk you through the process right now as well. All right, so if you go into applications here, you're gonna see Imaging Edge Desktop. I'm just gonna click that. And then Remote Tether Shooting Function Live View. That's what I wanna do. Now, so what you gotta do is you gotta connect your camera first using the USB cable, and you have to set it to PC Remote. All right, so on the camera, you're gonna to go to Control with Smartphone, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is turned off. If that's not, if that's turned on, that'll mess you up. So make sure that's off. Then you're gonna hit the menu button and you're gonna navigate over to setup and go to USB connection and have it set to PC remote. That's really all you need to do, guys. Then, at that point, you're gonna plug it into your computer. Now, in my case, I'm using the MacBook Pro, which is Thunderbolt. So I have a Thunderbolt to regular USB dongle. And the USB cable goes to micro USB on one end. And I'm going to plug that into the camera right here, like so. And then the other end of the cable, I'm just going to plug into the laptop. So I just plugged in the other end to the laptop, and now you can see the camera is showing connecting. And once you do, and once you do that, you click Start. And then in this window here, your camera will be here, the one that you ha currently have plugged in using the USB cable. If your camera is not here, click the refresh button and you should see on your camera, it should be connected to the computer and it should say connecting on it on the LCD screen. So just double click the camera like so. And now it's connecting, waiting for a response from the camera. All right, so once the remote viewer is launched, what you can do is hit this green button here if you're using the Mac and that will expand the remote viewer screen so you got a full screen view of what you're looking at and this is the live view here so you're seeing what the camera sees you can see right now I got my hand there I'm turning the pumpkin so it's a nice live view maybe like that might be a better angle for example now if you're looking over here on the right hand side you have all your different control functions 
And up top here, you have your different view options. You can actually zoom in if you want. See that? It'll zoom in for you if you're trying to magnify zoom, just like you can do on the camera itself. And I apologize because I have this just sitting on my desk, so the pumpkin is wiggling. And then display overlay. If you wanted to, you can display another image over this and have it as an overlay. So if you, you know, you're doing some kind of guide, you need a guide or you want to compare it to another image, for example. Then you have display guide, another option that's pretty interesting. You have grid view here. Again, really nice features. View here, this is going to simulate live view. And it changes the color quite a bit for some reason. Not exactly sure why it does that, because I have the white balance set to my custom white balance on the camera itself. So now, in any event, moving over here, oh, and if you turn live off, it goes away. That's the live view itself. And notice here on the top right, it, it gives you the battery life of the camera. So the, the battery is being charged by the computer right now, but it is still going down slowly. Uh, it was at 34% when I started playing around with this like a half hour ago. So it is definitely going down just a little bit, but um, it is charging from the computer as well. So it's not draining near as fast as it would be otherwise. Now, if you scroll down here, you got the save in area. So what I did was I created a folder in my pictures called remote shooting, and that's where I am saving the photos to, as you can see here. In my pictures folder, I created a folder called remote shooting. And then in there, I have a date, which is today's date. And that's where I'm going to, you know, pump out all my raw files to JPEG files, whatever the case may be. All right. So here I am in the pictures folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do file new folder. I'm just going to name this folder remote shooting. Like so, then I'm going to double click on the folder and I'm going to create a new folder within that folder and I'm going to put the date. So 11, 11, 2020, like so. And then I'm going to select that folder in the software. So all the images get put into that particular folder. So that's how I have it set up. And I recommend setting it up like that, just so you have a good organized spot of where your photos are. And you can then reference them later if you want to open them in Lightroom or Photoshop or another program. Um, just so you, it, everything is organized. You don't just want to have them going into your pictures folder, in my opinion, because it just gets too cumbersome. You can also change the file name and all sorts of stuff like that. So now if we scroll down here, you have interval shooting if you're doing time lapse, which is really awesome. And then you have normal, which is what I'm using. Up here on the top right, you have auto exposure lock. You have flash exposure which I'm not using the flash, so that's not going to apply. And then you have auto white balance lock, so you can lock your white balance, which is very nice if you're doing time-lapse photography and you're using auto white balance. You definitely want to lock it so it doesn't fl fluctuate when you're taking a series of photos. So that's what auto white balance lock is. And then over here, again, is your interval timer shooting. This is to record video. This is to take a photo. And this is to autofocus. This is like pressing the shutter halfway, as you can see right there. So now if you scroll down, you have your main settings here, and this is where you can control your aperture, shutter speed, camera mode, for example. And some of these settings, it won't let me change. You have to actually change them on the camera. For example, right now the mode, it won't let me change that. I have to actually change that on the mode dial of the camera. So I just changed the mode dial to shutter priority mode, and you can see now the image is crazy way overexposed due to the shutter speed being at 30 seconds. So I can just turn the dial on the camera to lower the shutter speed, and you can see how the histogram is adjusting accordingly as well. So let me just put that back to aperture priority mode, like so. And now if you click the arrows here next to the aperture, I can then change the aperture. Or you can do it from the camera, it doesn't matter, you can do it either way. And that's pretty sweet. Same thing with the exposure compensation. The ISO here, I have hard set to 100. I could put that on auto if I want, or raise it up, lower it, and so forth. As you can see, this is quite powerful. Now, if we move down to sub settings here, this is where you can control your image quality. Right now I have it set to raw quality, and you can change your aspect ratio if you want. I have the drive mode set to two second self timer because the pumpkin is sitting on my desk and it's wiggling that little bit. So I wanna make sure that the pumpkin has two seconds to settle before I actually take the picture. 
So I have the self timer set there. You can adjust that. You can have it set for bracketing, all sorts of options. You see all the options here. It's amazing. High speed shooting and so forth. And then you have here, you have picture effects. This only works in JPEG mode and it's a lot of fun to play around with picture effects, but you do have to put it to JPEG mode. And then of course here you have white balance. I have my white balance custom set to the lighting, which is about 3200 degrees Kelvin. Dynamic range optimizer is set to auto and then focus area. Now in focus area, I have mine set to spot focus. So if you wanna be able to move the focus around using this program, you just have to have the spot focus up on the camera itself. So if you basically go into the camera and you have your spot, your spot focus, see how I'm moving it right now? I'm moving it right now with the camera because I currently have the spot focus up on the screen. So if you just leave that spot focus up on your screen on the camera itself, you could then just click around and control your focus like this, which I find really useful. Now I can adjust it and it's now focused on the stem on the top. I could then move it back down here, refocus the camera and now it's focused there. So again, you have to have the flexible spot up on the LCD screen of the camera itself in order to be able to click around and move it in this program. If you don't have it up on your screen active, you're not going to be able to move it. So down here you can change the camera to manual focus if you want, and then you can use these little arrows to just fine tune the focus. And this is very helpful if you're having a hard time focusing on something and you just want to go with manual focus. You could then zoom in here using the magnify zoom tool, like so, and then you can adjust the focus here with these arrows. As you can see, it works really well. You can see I'm starting to get closer, somewhere right about there. And then you can hit this little arrow on the top to bring it back to regular view. I'm just going to change it back to autofocus mode though. So below that you have the histogram, which is nice for checking your exposure. So you can see here it's exposing to the left a little bit. Highlight information is there. So I can actually raise up the exposure comp if I wanted to just to get a little bit better exposure based on the histogram here. So that's another nice tool you can use. So let me, uh, let me take a photo here so you can see what happens when you actually take a photo. So when you take a photo, it automatically brings you into the viewer. Now the viewer is just another part of the, the suite. So you get the viewer, the editor, and the remote controller. And this is what it looks like. Now if you double click, it'll zoom out Right now, if you look on the top right, I have it set to preview display mode, but you also have thumbnail display. So this, these are all the pictures that I took during this session when I was testing this out. I particularly like this view. And then if you just double click on the image, it'll automatically give you 100% preview. And you can click up here on the top. You have a bunch of different options here. You have the histogram, so you can view that. You have the info here which will give you all the different info. It'll tell you how the camera was set with all these different settings, which is nice because in Lightroom, you don't get all this information, but in this program you do. And I particularly like that. And then if you want to edit this photo, you can then double click it and it'll bring up the photo into the editor. Oh, it's called edit here. So this is the other application that's part of the Imaging Edge desktop suite. You have the remote control, you got the viewer and you got the editor. Now in here, if you double click again, it'll bring you to 100%, get a better view here, you can see the actual pixels, and you could then go in here and adjust all, whatever options you want. You have sharpness, can raise up the sharpness, you can add a tone curve if you want, because I was shooting raw quality, and uh, you know, you could just play around with the photo to your liking using these various tools. Now it's not as intuitive as a program like Lightroom, but you do get some basic adjustments here. It's, it's just fun to play around. You can hit set vivid mode if you want, get a little more punch there, neutral, all sorts of stuff like that. I'm just gonna put it back to camera settings. And then color correction, you can tweak your colors, your temperature, and so forth. Again, you got the histogram, and you have a bunch of tools up here like crop. You can just crop the image if you want and click and drag to crop the image however you like, something like that. Now you just basically crop the image. So I did cr create changes to this file, so I'm just going to click save. And now those changes that I made have been saved. If I wanted to output this file to share on Facebook or something like that, you can go to the output button here 
and then you can select, you could save it as a TIFF file if you want, if you're going to do further editing in Photoshop and things like that, or you can set it to a JPEG file if you're going to share it on the web. And that's where you would do that. You could select your quality of compression. You can also change the size if you want to whatever suits your needs. And that's pretty much how that works. You could just click save, select where you want to save it, and that will save the image for you. So I'm just going to close this out by hitting the red X there. And notice here in the viewer, it defaults you to a remote shoots folder here, but you can scroll down to the folder that you actually have all your images saved in. As you can see right here, I have mine set to pictures and then I created that folder. Remember the remote shooting folder? So you could then view all the different pictures that were taken during that session. And you can see here, I had this one set to illustration mode and it's just warning me that this is a JPEG file. So there's only a few different options here that you can change because this is pretty much a raw editor. So I can crop it and things like that, but you can't really do too much other than that. So that's pretty much how this works. You got the viewer, you got the editor, and you got the remote viewer. So if I go back into the remote viewer here, you could see my battery life is now down to 22%. So it's just barely going down because I have it charging on the USB charger. So let me just show you. I got another little model here, with this cool car. And if I change my focus here to the tire, click focus. Let me change my aperture. It's got to turn the AF button off. When the AF button's on, a lot of the stuff grays out. So if you turn the AF button off, you could then select other options, like in my case, the focus. So I'm going to switch the focus to here, hit the AF, and now it's going to focus on the back tire there. See that? And so if I want the focus here, I'll just click in the center area, click the AF button, and that will lock the focus. So let me just change the aperture here, turn the AF off, switch this. I want to switch this to F1.4. All right, so that's maximum depth of field. Focus there, and I'll take the quick picture. And there you have it. If I double click, you could see just how incredibly sharp that is. It nailed the focus on the front wheel and you can see the depth of field. So you can see here, the focus looks pretty good. And notice how it started like a new session here. Remote shots because I closed the viewer. If you leave the viewer open as you shoot, they'll just keep adding up. But if you close the viewer, it will create a new session. But again, all the photos are saved in the folder that you created for the remote shooting. So everything will be in this folder right here, just so you're aware. As you can see, here's the shot I just took. So now if I go back to the remote shooter program, I'm just going to focus on the back wheel here. See that? So that is pretty much how this program works, guys. And um, it's pretty straightforward, like I said. And if you want, if you go into the viewer and you want to output these files, you can actually do it right from here if you want. You don't have to actually go into the editor to output. So you can click the output button right here and you can then batch if you want to do all the files. You could load a setting in here so you could save a setting and then load that preset basically to the files. Apply each raw file's own settings to each raw file. That's default. You can click where you want to save it, select your format. You could set it to JPEG, ARW if you want. I'm going to save it right into my remote shooting and then I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it JPEG. So now I have a JPEG folder within my remote shooting folder. See that right here? And it's processing just that one raw file because that's all I had selected. So I can close that. And now if you see here, I have in my folder, here's the JPEG file saved as a JPEG. And now I could upload that to the internet if I wanted to. It's in a proper format for that purpose. All right, so another thing I wanted to show you was, notice how it says here the camera's battery is low, please charge the battery. So if I have to change the battery or whatever, you gotta unplug the, the camera. Watch what happens when you unplug the USB. It just basically says the you know A6400 is disconnected. So the program stays open. It doesn't really know what to do, but it just keeps everything where it was. So now if I turn the camera on and off, for example, change the battery, 
you can just plug the battery, plug the camera back in, and it will automatically reconnect. So just wait, I just plugged it back in, and now it just automatically reconnected. You see that? So now it's back to live view, and it's working exactly as it was. So just so you know, if you unplug the camera or, or whatever the case may be, you don't have to actually re redo everything. Like, it'll automatically reconnect by default, just so you're aware. So now the viewer can be used to view any photos on your computer, pretty much, you know? So I'm just going to navigate to my pictures folder, and this is where my raw files are from the other day when I was reviewing that awesome 7 Artisans 35mm lens, as you can see here. And um, But you, I could process any of these raw files using the viewer and the editor. And that's what's so cool about this program, that is that it's free, and it works very similar to Lightroom when it comes to processing and stuff like that. Let me just find an image here that looks like it might be a good one. All right, I'll use this one here. All right, so now watch. When I double-click this image, it's going to open up in the editor, and then if I hit the green button here, it'll zoom to full screen. And now what I can do is I could lower the brightness a little bit. Let me see what the histogram looks like. You can see the histogram right here. So let me just lower the brightness just a touch. There we go. So now I have the highlights aren't quite blown out as much. Now color temperature, you can adjust that if you want. Camera style, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on vivid. And now you can see I got some nice vivid colors. If I scroll down here, I can up the sharpness. Maybe a little bit more. There we go, something like that. Scroll down a little bit more. Add a little bit of a tone curve here. Something like that. We'll just add a little bit more contrast. And now, if you look here, you could see a before and after. Here's a before. And here's an after. So you can see, very pretty straightforward on how to edit a raw file in here. You can just adjust a couple of settings. Nothing crazy. So you got contrast here you could mess with. This is another area that works really good. So you can just hit these pluses and minuses to bring out whatever detail you want. And then when you're all done, all you got to do is click this button right here. Save. And it'll save the raw file with this information. So now the raw file, when you go back into the viewer, will look like this. And you could also output it from here if you want, you know, save it as a JPEG. If you want to upload this to the web, you could just go here on file format and click on JPEG. And then you can save this file out as a JPEG. Select your compression level quality. That's basically your file size and then your image size as well. You can change there. So now that I got this image where I want, what I can do is I can go up here and I can do edit image process settings, and then I can hit save. So now I can save these image process settings to the folder here where the image is. And that makes it very simple to do what I'm going to show you next. So just click save, like so. Now I'm going to close this out. And now these two images here, if I select these two images, which are basically the same image, I could then go to edit, apply image process settings. See that? And then I have this saved file right here, and I can click open, and it's just going to automatically process those raw files, so I don't need to individually edit them. It's very similar to syncing in Lightroom, so check it out. Now they're all edited with the same settings, and that's how you would go about doing that. You just have to save your settings when you're in the editor, and then you can apply those settings when you're in the viewer, which is quite powerful. All right, guys, so that is it for this fairly quick crash course into the Imaging Edge desktop software from Sony using my Macintosh. And uh, like I said, the program's pretty darn powerful. It works really good. And uh, if you want to remote shoot for various reasons, um, this is a really good option. And it's actually pretty darn easy to use, too, as well. So you can't go wrong trying it out, at the very least. And, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, be sure to ask below in the comments area and I will be happy to try and help you out. All right, I will catch up with you guys next time. Please take care, have a good day, and, uh, you know, stay safe out there, all right?